Europe's central bank is under pressure. Last month it unveiled a series of measures designed to kickstart the Eurozone's sluggish economy and get inflation back to its target of up to 2%. I met with Benoit Curé, member of the ECB's executive board at France's Davos, the Rencontre Économique in Aix-en-Provence. I asked him if Europe could escape the Japanese curse of deflation. When, when risk for the Eurozone would have been, uh, for instance, for the European banking system to look like what Japan looked like in the 90s, meaning zombie banks financing zombie projects without, uh, uh, without uh, supervisory uh, red lights uh, controls. This, of course, uh, we will avoid uh, thanks to the asset quality review and thanks to the banking union. So that's one aspect. On the monetary policy side, we certainly uh, want to avoid deflation. We don't see the risk as being material today. What is the likelihood the ECB will embark on a bout of quantitative easing? Well, we, we, have to, we have to prepare for it in case we need it. Uh, but we have also have to know that uh, it may not be the best answer uh, in the European environment. Something that has worked in the US or in the UK uh, may not work in the Eurozone because we are financed by banks, not by financial markets. The environment is totally different. And when you think about it, uh, the level of uh, government bond yields today is very low. So why would we need QE? So the most of what we would have achieved uh, by QE, it has been achieved already uh, in the markets. You sit on the executive board of the ECB and you're also chairman of the payments committee at the Bank for International Settlements. So you're particularly well placed for the debate that's raging at the moment over whether there is a conflict between macro prudential policy and the loose monetary policy. What is your view on this? EU treaty says uh, the ECB has a primary mandate of price stability. So really what we have to do is to make sure that our inflation rate in the Eurozone goes back to 2%. For that, we need low rates for a very long period of time. We know uh, that this may have unintended consequences. We know that it may have collateral effects, meaning potential bubbles on asset prices. It may come, but then we need to tackle it with other instruments. So what instruments do you have to make sure that we don't run the risk of another financial crisis? Well, most, uh, most asset bubbles are uh, local. So to, to address local issues, we need local instruments. And these are the macroprudential instruments, which starts from the national level, which can be topped up at the ECB level. So you have the two levels, national level. And if it becomes big, or if it's not handled properly, ECB will have to step in and to take action. Yeah, how do you actually make macro prudential policy for the Eurozone when you have national banks acting in national interest? It is absolutely okay if the Bundesbank uh, deals with uh, asset bubbles in Germany. It is actually the duty of the Bundesbank to deal with asset bubbles in Germany. Only uh, if it becomes a, a, Euro, a Eurozone-wide issue, or if it's not addressed properly at local level, then the ECB will have to step in. Uh, what is your feeling about the asset quality review of the banks? What is necessary to make sure it is credible? Uh, we are absolutely on track in terms of the timeline, the implementation of the AQR, and I see good cooperation between the ECB and the supervisors. Um, there will be difficult discussions because this is about harmonizing assumptions, harmonizing supervisory methods, mm -hmm. harmonizing the way uh, different ratios um, are, are being computed, assessed. Mm -hmm. um, so this harmonization phase will be, uh, will be difficult, but that's exactly why we want to do it because we want to move towards a fully harmonized uh, supervisory uh, method, supervisory uh, uh, rulebook uh, at, uh, at Eurozone level. Can I go back to the question about, you mentioned asset bubbles. I mean, how concerned are you that we are heading for an asset bubble? I would say today not so much. We don't see uh, in any market segment uh, prices being very far from fundamentals. But, and there is a big but, we see uh, prices going up on bond markets, meaning rates, government yields being very low today in, in lots of jurisdictions. We see equity prices going up. And we see this level, uh, level of asset prices are, as being predicated on future reforms, not on past reforms. So this is okay if um, we see productivity gains in the economy, if we see uh, debt going down uh, both in the public sector and in the private sector. And then it's, then it's consistent. If we see a situation where asset prices remain high or even higher and reforms are not being implemented and productivity does not improve in countries, 
then uh, there will be a disconnect and then maybe we have to act and use the macroprudential instruments. In the Eurozone, to get the Eurozone back to growth, however, it's still been rather disappointing. Do we need to devalue the Euro and could the Euro be helped to devalue by the ECB? Uh, the Euro uh, is something that we take into account when we, uh, when, we, when we set our monetary policy. A lot of the low level of inflation today in the Eurozone, 0 0.5 inflation, which is low, a lot of it uh, is due uh, to uh, the, uh, the uh, strength of the euro. So the, more, the stronger the euro, uh, the more uh, we have to do monetary accommodation, but it's only an indicator. Uh, it's, we don't target the exchange rate, it's not possible to target it anyway because exchange rates uh, are set on, uh, on, on global markets. Benoit Curry, thank you very much. Thank you.